What's up everybody? Today we've got a few quick cheating stories for your entertainment, so sit back, relax, and listen up. First up, my dub dub walked in on me cheating with her coworker while we were separated. Why do I feel guilty about the situation? Me, 35 male, and my wife, 37 female, have been married for 10 years. We have two kids together, and our marriage was pretty much good with normal ups and downs. In September of 2020, my wife had a two-week-long fling with one of her co-workers on their business trip. She came back pretty normal, but acted super clingy. About two weeks later, while I was watching Netflix, messages were popping up on her phone. I looked at the phone and saw that her sister was messaging her. I thought of replying to her back, so I opened her phone and saw the conversation between them, which she discussed the mistake she made at her trip and how she was remorseful about it. Her sister asked her to tell me about everything, but she denied it and said that it would break my heart and family so she would not tell me but rather become a good wife and would always make up for it for the rest of her life. I was devastated and felt numb to my heart. My wife came into the room and I confronted her at that very moment. I was shocked and asked her about the situation. She started crying and remorsing and how the death of her grandmother had affected her and she was vulnerable at that time. All cheaters BS went on, but I knew that I wanted divorce. I took a drive to my brother's house to calm down. Next morning, I shifted my things to my other house and told her that for six months, we are living separately and I am filing for divorce. Before divorce is granted, couples have to live separately for a period of time in our country. I moved out and started doing my own things. I started focusing on myself, going to the gym, eating healthy, and also joined clubs. We married at a young age. While my wife had her fun before marriage because she had a supporting family, me and my brother had struggled during our early times. Our parents died when we were young and we spent our childhood at an orphanage. So I had to provide for me and my brother while completing my education. I pretty much spent my entire teenage and early 20s establishing my career and creating new sources of income. I thought that I made so many compromises to stay faithful in marriage while she easily gave up vows and got laid with another man. At the clubs, I made several friends with benefits relationships with several women. While I was doing my fun, my wife was considering this time apart as her time to show me that she will become the best wife. She left her job and found a new job. She started dropping my favorite food at my workplace, sending me love notes along with flowers, doing laundry when she dropped kids at my house. She had no idea I was seeing multiple women. By the end of October, I dropped the idea of clubbing but continued my friends with benefits relation with one woman, Jay. She was in her early 20s, was attractive, and had good skills. In early November, my wife started asking me out on dates, which I turned down a few times, but she kept insisting, so I went on a date with her. It was like we were in our 20s and we were falling for each other again. We went on several dates, but I continued my friends with benefits relationship with Jay. I was confused whether to give her another chance or to give her divorce. Yesterday morning, my wife asked me out on a date again, but I refused, said I had plans with Jay. I went to her house and we started doing our thing. We usually walk around naked. In the evening, we were just kissing on the couch and grinding on one another naked. My wife walked in on us as she was dropping some files to Jay. At first, she was just standing like a statue, but a few seconds later, she dropped the file on the floor and left. I could see her in her eyes. As soon as she left, I asked Jay about their relationship. She told me that they were co-workers. I was overwhelmed by guilt and left Jay's place. At night, I arrived at my house where my wife was playing with the kids. As soon as she saw me, she hugged me tightly and started crying. I could see the hurt my betrayal did to my wife. She said that she destroyed my high morals and she is the reason I slept with other women. I comforted her and we ended up sleeping together. This morning, she left a note alongside my bed saying, just give me one chance to make this relationship better and be a part of your life. We could make our family better and recover from this. Let's start fresh and forgive what happened in the past and be faithful to one another for the rest of our life. I just want to spend the rest of my life making up to you. I am confused what to do next. For the past two or three months, she has done a lot to prove she is remorseful and wants this relationship. I am feeling guilty how I have treated her for these months and how much she would suffer in her job by seeing Jay almost every day. Your wife certainly sounds remorseful and is trying to make it work, but there are a few things to consider in your decision. Are you absolutely certain that this is her only affair? Ask her if she's prepared to take a polygraph test and gauge her reaction. Having the fling for two weeks is troublesome. This was not a one-time slip up during that time. Are you prepared to be worried about what she is doing when you and her are apart? Do not just forget about it as she states. That will not allow you the proper time to deal with her infidelity. If you do not process it properly now, he may just resurface many years later. 
Good luck in your decision. All right, next up, I, 41 male, found out my wife, 39 female, cheated on me because of 2020? I'm on the security team for Major TV Network. She's in finance. We met in 2012, right after I EASD'd from Marine Corps. She was volunteering at the VA for her firm giving financial advice for vets who just came home, and we felt the spark when we met. Spark turned to flame, but I'll spare the mushy-gushy stuff. I've been essential since the pandemic started. When news crews are out and about, I'm the guy protecting them, so through all of this crap that's been 2020, I've had a front row seat. Because I've gotta be on the ready to go on assignment, naturally this means I'm not home. Haven't been home in the sense of not just making pit stops in months. Between covering COVID, the protests and the election, it's been a whirlwind of traveling for me this year, and evidently, the wife, or I guess the soon-to-be ex-wife now, apparently got lonely and started shacking up with this guy who works in her building. Not the same firm, but they were in the same building. From what she told me, it just kinda happened. Sorry if this is disjointed, but I'm still kinda seething at the moment. Okay, here's how it went down. I've just finally settled back into my old schedule locally. We are in New York City. Since the election ended. Like I said, I rotated home a few times over the last few months, but never for more than four days before I have to hit the road again. I had no inclination there was anything even happening. Three days ago, she texted me that she had something important to tell me. So I come home from work, and she's waiting for me in the living room. She doesn't waste any time. She tells me she's had an affair for the last several months, and that she deeply regrets it. She says she was weak and lonely. She'd come home to an empty apartment and feel depressed and angry. And that this young guy, she says he was 29, started doing things to try and cheer her up. They'd see each other in the deli she got her lunch from. Things escalated into an EA, and then a PA. She says she wasn't thinking of the consequences, she was just living in the moment. All this, and more, with waterworks set to full blast. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there completely numb. She tells me she ended it with the dude a month ago, after realizing how selfish and deceitful she had been. Has gone no contact with him, and even offers to give me her phone so I can take it to my tech guy best friend to check the records and prove she's not talked to the dude. I couldn't say a word. I sat there silent for a good four minutes staring blankly at the floor, trying to process all this. It's her next words that made me snap. Baby, I'm so sorry. You didn't deserve this. You've been the perfect husband and I betrayed you. I haven't felt that kind of rage since Helmand province. Context, my platoon saw heavy casualties in Helmand. I buried three brothers who didn't come home alive, and another of my brothers is physically and mentally destroyed by what we experienced there. I flew up out of my seat, grabbed it, and heaved it across the room. The growl I let out was guttural. It's like I could see this all happening in third person. It's her shriek of terror that snapped me out of it. I looked down at her, and our eyes met, tears pouring down both our faces. I grabbed my bag and leave. No words, I just leave. That was three days ago. I'm typing this on my phone in a motel. I've got a crap ton of PTO, so I called in a couple of days. I'm still trying to process this all, but one thing is certain. It's over and I can't go back. To her. The apartment. To the last eight years I devoted myself to making her happy. Not after this. Not after showing a glimpse of the darkness I still keep buried in my soul. I'm a freaking wreck right now. I guess the one saving grace is she cared enough to tell me. But I can never see her as my wife anymore. And I couldn't be a husband to her after such an explosion rage like that. She'd been blowing my phone up. 873 messages and counting. Her mother is called. Her sister, too. So is my brother. Real one, not Jarhead. And my best buddy. I'm completely off the grid. And I need to stay that way until I figure this out. I know what I have to do. There's no return from this. I've got to end the marriage. I guess I just needed to vent. And this seemed like a good place to do it. And for anyone, specifically my fellow service men and women, I'm okay. I'm not gonna check out. I'm too salty to do that. I just need to get buttoned up before I make my next move. First of all, you are not responsible for anyone's wrong. You have been a dedicated person and she admits it. Don't take it in the other way, brother. Don't regret the years you've spent. She is no longer the person you once loved. You have done everything you could, and now you have to end it, because the person has betrayed you. You need to stand for yourself and look at the mirror and say that you are a strong person and a great human being. You have to move on. Life does not go on as planned, but you should be happy that you don't have to live a lie any longer. Truth can be hurting, but at the same time, it's revealing and sets you free. You're an honorable man, so just keep your composure and live your life with dignity. There is a bright future waiting for you. Good luck, man. 
and thank you for your service. All right, next up, the man I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with cheated on me and dropped me because I was against being in a polygamous relationship. I don't know how to start this, but all I gotta say is that I am extremely heartbroken and devastated. The man I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with revealed to me that he is talking to another girl and that he has started to catch feelings for her. We have been together for two years. He was constantly on and off of me and kept asking for space because he is too overwhelmed by his personal problems. I believed everything he said and always gave him the benefit of the doubt. Turns out, he was lying to me. During those periods where he would ask for space, he was apparently entertaining another girl who he met on a dating app. He did admit to me before that he had commitment issues. I was the best partner ever. There has been nothing that I have ever failed to do for him. I put his wants and needs above mine. I made sure he was always happy. I sacrificed so much of myself just to make this work. I stood nearby him during the ups and downs. I gave him too much of myself and he gave me too little in exchange. I gave him my heart, my soul, my mind. I was a fool. I hate him for putting me in this pain. He decided to throw me and all memories away for someone he met so recently. He begged me not to block him or disappear from his life. He begged me to stay, but I have to leave. I can't stop thinking about how he is getting flirty with this girl and how he sees a future with her. I can't stop thinking about how he is attracted to her. The moment I knew about it, I asked him to block her and stop talking to her. He said no because she is a cool woman and he wants her to be his second girl. We had a talk about polygamy before. He knows I'm against it. And he said that he was not thinking about it either. The truth is that he lied to me. He was hoping that by that time I'd change my views or that my love would be so strong that I would compromise and give in. The girl he is talking to now doesn't mind polygamy. He is excited about her. I feel like my soul is crushed. How can you claim to love someone yet drop them like they've never existed? Seems like his love was not as strong or as real. I hate having chest contractions. I hate everything that he has put me through. I can't leave my bed without crying. I am falling behind in school. I blocked him on all social media except his cell phone number. I just want the courage to do so. Just the thought of me blocking his number means that I'm deleting him from my life forever. I have attachment issues, and when I love, I love so hard and unconditionally. I form strong bonds with people, and that's why it's so hard for me to accept that this has to be the end and that I should eliminate the thought of him being back in my life, because I can't do injustice to myself by wasting another two years with him. At the same time, my blood boils when I think about how he might be chatting with this girl and entertaining her while I'm here crying my eyes out until I pass out. I can't get over our memories. I can't get over our good times. That's why I feel that I'm more likely to get back to him. I know this sounds ridiculous, but I feel so weak. He wasn't only my partner, but also my friend that I trusted everything with. I wish I could have him back, at least as a friend. But that's no good either because I'd be super jealous about who he's talking to. The only solution is to eliminate the thought of him getting back to my life. You dodged a bullet. This will hurt for a bit, then one day it will hurt less. He wasn't the right guy, clearly. Be glad you found out now before investing more years in him. There is no way to remove your pain right now, but soon you'll be back to your happy self. Replace him with someone better. Best of luck on your journey. Here if you want to talk. Thank you for watching the Red World. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like, subscribe, and see you in the next one.